friends. Glad to see you made it. For we are gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, he's alive. My friends, I, I, I want to talk to you all today about, uh, you know, edifying Jesus Christ and, and not edifying ourselves. And, and, and also, I want to talk to people that, you know, many times we think as Christians or, or people, we come through our walk that, that everybody sees the same thing and everybody understands the same things and, you know, we're all at the same level, but sometimes we forget some people are brand new and they don't really know. Some people may be, you know, kind of there and understand, but they've been broken down or depressed or or wherever they may have been in life. And so, kind of want to talk to about God and how, how much God loves us and how much God wants to be a part of our lives, you know, and how he wants to use each one of us for, for his will, for his purposes. And those things are very simple. They're, they're, it's love. And so let's pray and let's pray together. I want to pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today to, to ask you for wisdom and understanding of that wisdom. Gracious God, you, you are mighty and powerful and beyond measure. No human mind can understand you. And so we are forever seeking you, Father, and forever wanting to, to know you. To be closer to you. So we ask you, Father, to, to give us wisdom and, and allow us to, to understand what it is your wisdom is. Heavenly Father, rain, rain your Holy Spirit upon us today. Bless anyone who watches this, their homes and, and, and their families. Bless them, Father. Gracious God, forgive us. Forgive us for, for our trespasses, our wrongdoings. Forgive us all the times we, we, we lost our way and, and didn't trust you. Have mercy, Papa, and give us understanding today. Give us that power to, to forgive one another. Father, we, please don't lead us down paths of temptation or testing or trials, but, but deliver us from them. Save us from those trials and those testing. It's your kingdom, it's your power, it's your glory which we seek. Let your kingdom come, O oh God, and let your will be done. In the name of Jesus Christ, we all pray. Amen. My friends, I want to remind you that you know, even these things, this stuff, it's wonderful stuff. And God gave us these things to, to make a connection with Him. But remember, God gave us these things to, to make a connection with Him. And that could be for any gifts, you know. Maybe some people, you know, even back in Paul's day, as, you know, they were having all this stuff and everybody's rising up and having revelations and boy... He goes to church and they're full of tongues and everything over there and, you know, and that's what he was seeing back in those days. As you can see it today, as God is just dumping his spirit out onto all through the world and you see prophets rising up and, and watchmen rising up and all kinds of people and, and some of them, I see, have received so much spirit of God, they're kind of get a little confused of what's happening and not sure where it's going but I see God as he's working and molding people all around you know he's moving and he's making a great movement and that movement is calling the people home back to to, to Jesus and, and, and the real Jesus and, and to understand you know that Jewish side of Jesus is from God <laughs> You know, the, a lot of this stuff, as Christians, we've kind of taken it away. And, and Jesus never asked us to take those things away. He asked to quit worshiping the things. 
you know, this stuff is just like reminders, you know, and to keep us focused. And that's the same like this, is you have a blue cord to remind you always that God is with you. And He called you. He made you. He called you to Him. We didn't come and decide to go to God, but God called us His children. You know, Jesus yelled out, who knows where we were in our life, we, you know. We were chosen by God. And these things aren't going to get us closer to God, but by, through rituals, uh, by whatever it is, through eating of foods and, and different foods, all that stuff isn't going to bring you closer to God. You know, because it's God. It, we want to put God first in our lives. And those things break our will down. You know, kind of pull us out of the world and bring us to, uh, you know, so we're more acceptable for God. And, and what God wants is to soften our hearts so that we're loving people and we're more loving. You know, and you notice that through life and most people, we're, we find God when we're pretty broke down. You know, when we're, we've lost all hope. And there's God to show up and save us from that hope. And, and that's the thing, you know, with, with churches or synagogues and that, you know. And the Jewish people, you're the church. In the synagogue, you know, that's like hospital. Place to come and learn. You know, the... Church should be out there working. It's a working thing. And you, the church, being working out in society or your home or, you know, being a good mom, being a good dad, whatever it is, we all have different gifts. Now, some people have maybe the gifts of tongues and they're there bragging and kind of, yeah, you know, you really need to have that gift. And, you don't force gifts on people. God chooses what people he wants to have, whatever gifts they are. And we don't worship the gift. But the giver of the gift. You know, it ain't about the tongues. It's about God who, who gives the tongues. It ain't about the, the prayer show. It's about God who, who, who provides these things for our children, for his children. You know, that's the thing, is we're out there in the wilderness of life, or, or out there in the desert of life, you know, and, and out on our own, outside the camp, there, wherever we are, like today or whatnot, we're not like in church, but we're out in here, and, and God calls you home. That's the thing with coming back to church and stuff, and people at church got to kind of understand that, you know, we're all, we're lost, we've all gone our own way. And it's God who calls us home, called, calls you in to the hospital to, to repair you, to fix you, to equip you, to go back out in, into this, you know, broken world. And that's the thing with, with being a disciple. God wants, and Jesus wants to make disciples of all people. And being a disciple is like a doer. you got to do the word. You know, it's a lot of church people... You know, worship the salvation, but not the giver of the salvation. You know what I mean? So there they think that, oh, I raised my hand and now I'm saved. And there I go, I'm back off into, into the same life. But, but God wants a better plan. He wants to make a better life for you, for us, and has a plan to, to get us and mold us and shape us into that place. And even as people, as young people, you know, maybe God gives you the gift of prophecy or whatever his gift he may have given to you. You don't want to, like, abuse it and say, oh, well, I'm, 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 oh, my eyes are open now and now I can see that, that, oh, you guys are all terrible. And, and you keep looking and looking and focusing. If you'd stop doing that, if you'd stop, well, that's fine. But where are we going to go from there? You know, we need to focus on, on, on the repair, on the path. Yeah, we get off the path, but we're going to get back on the path because God has a good path for us. You know, as men and women as like here on earth, 
We would tell our kid, you know, hey, never stick your finger in the light socket because, you know, it will zap you. But, but God kind of does the opposite. <laughs> He's like this. Child, stick your finger in, in that light socket. And the little kid sticks it in there and, brrr, you know, and it blasts him. And the next day it comes out, hey, child, put, put your finger in there. And an insane person, someone who has no sanity, would stick their finger back in that thing, right? But a, a wise child would, would turn around and look at dad and be like, are you crazy? That hurt. There's no way I'm sticking my finger in there again. Oh, good, my son. That's wisdom. And, and that's the thing with our lives, is if we get kind of outside the wheel, you know, God puts in the, in the Old Testament, like, a, things and sets from God, who has such more greater knowledge, wisdom, understanding of not just humans, but all creation, all things. So he gives us these things to help us along our way. So that we will have a successful life. So, so that we can be successful witnesses. So we can be like better people. And live in love. And, and these things are there to teach you how, how to love. And, and not like man style, but agape style. God style of love. And it all starts with, with loving God. And, and understanding that, that you are love. And we are loved. And so I want, I got kind of some reading to do, good reading. The Word of God is where we find God. That's where we find our relationship. Don't always rely on somebody else's Word, but put on God who, who gives the Word. You know, not that these other people, not to say they don't have the gifts, but, but sometimes they're, they're, they're so focused on, on what you've done wrong or how bad you are, did they have no answer for how to repair, how to fix. Jesus has always been about repentance. We must repent. And that's what these things do, is make repentance. And, you know, that's like following, you know, the Omars and, and some of their traditions and uh, feast days and all that stuff. God put those things to make him bigger in our lives. And that's the thing with Christians today, as they've taken all that away and acted like Jesus throwed all that stuff away. And he didn't. He didn't. He, he threw away temple worship. And as sacrificing of bulls and sacrificing of stuff for our sins. And through doing some of this stuff, you can see how people would mistake and start doing that as like sacrifices for their sins. I'm not going to eat no pork for a month or whatever. And that way, you know, God sees this great sacrifice. Oh, I'm not going to drink none of this stuff because God will see the sacrifice. God don't need to see the sacrifice. The sacrifice is Jesus Christ, the salvation. What, what he wants to see is the softened heart. You know, the, 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 the willingness to trust his word. You know, and that's what went wrong in those days. So they were worshiping all, all the stuff and not God who gave the stuff. You know, we sometimes we think as other people, as we're watching these other people boast and brag of, about their gifts, the, uh, some of the smaller of uh, the kingdom get, get afraid, like, like, get ashamed where, oh, I'm not like you guys, and oh, I'm worthless, and, and that's why we don't want to boast and brag about anything, but, but only Jesus Christ, because we don't want to put our other brothers and sisters down, a, a newborn Christian, and make them feel unworthy, or like, oh boy, I, I don't have no gifts, or I don't have nothing like you guys got. You know, we don't, we don't want to bring shame or put stumbling blocks in front of people's faith. But we want them always to grow, each and every one of us. And that's why, you know, it's good to get out a pencil and study. And when you're in the Word of God, get your pencils out. And if God spoke to your heart, 
You know, it may be different for you than it is for me. So if you're in the Bible, got your pen out, and, and you can write in your Bibles. You know, it's a holy word, but you're a studier. You're a learner. So when God speaks to your heart, mark that down. See how, how that applies to your life. That's like through the Omar things. It, it's basically reading a lot of the Bible. For 50 days, we're going to read, study the Bible. And, and when I come out at the end, when Pentecost is there, what am I going to, you know, you see as a gift from God? Well, you're going to see you're a better person. <laughs> you're going to see uh, more love. You're going to see a difference in your relationship between you, your children, or maybe your spouse because, you know, I have more love. <laughs> That's the thing with God. God is love. He's always been love. And all this stuff is about love. For that's what God wants. That's the will of God. We love each other just as we would ourselves. And that's the thing with the temple worship. We don't want to love church and make all our worship about church. Church is a place to learn. It's a hospital for all of us to go and, you know, gather ourselves back together. So we're equipped, we're ready to go out into the world where, where, where that's where the real ministry is. That's like Jesus Christ, you know. It's, it's when you begin to walk like Him, be like Him. And that's the thing is, you don't force stuff on anyone. Jesus didn't force miracles to anybody or anything. What did He do? He made Himself available in the midst of broken people. You know, that's... That's the thing with like food banks and stuff and getting involved in helping out broken people, people that are hopeless. You know, sometimes we want the greatest miracles of all. we got to see these great miracles. But we pass by all the miracles of our day that God's been doing for us. You know, and that's like there was the time when I was at the food bank and the, it was closed. And we just happened to be there doing some work and whatnot. And somebody came in, wanted some food, you know. And one of the persons said, no, nah, we're closed. You come back next week or whatever the day was. And a couple others, no, you're, you're not going to do that. She's not leaving here without food. And that's the thing, you know. She's out there living in her car, praying to God. Maybe not living right with God, but, but God, you know, there she zapped herself with, with, with the thing. And, and God's like, you know, how bad does that hurt? It hurts real bad. Well, pray so I can answer your prayer. And there she is praying in her car, wherever she is. And I have no hope. I lost all my faith. Ruined my life. Kind of at the end. But, but she had the strength. She's crying out to God. She's crying out for help. And God, our Father, wants to help her. And tell her, go to the food bank. Get you some food. Go to that church. And there we were. God orchestrated everything, had us there, ready to answer her prayer. Yeah, we didn't see a miracle. The guy who, who told her, no, you don't get no box. Nobody saw no miracle. She saw a miracle. She saw a miracle. And everybody else, a oh, miracle? I gave her some food. But God said, you know, by answering that prayer, by being there, by giving her that hope, you did a great miracle. Because you opened her heart. She received Jesus Christ. I, I, I went to my dad for help, and he helped me. Same way as the woman there at the, you know, going to touch his garment. And with the 12 years of bleeding. You know, she's, she's at the end of her home. She spent all her money, everything, there for, for to all the doctors. But I have just a little hope left. If I could only touch his karma. That's all I got left. That's all I have. Just one little touch. And it was enough. It was enough. She asked dad. 
And there he was willing, wanting to, to, to answer her prayer. And, and there he was in the midst of people who needed answered prayers. You know, he didn't go around asking everybody, Hey, who needs a prayer answered? Come, line them up. You know, let's start doing some miracles. No, he, he made himself available to those who were broken. To, to the lost. And that's where us, each individual, gots to understand that, that God wants to answer our prayers. And we don't need to focus if we get our focus off us. See, when we're praying for us and ourselves always, we're not trusting Him. We're not trusting Him. And that breaks the trust. And now you don't see miracles. You don't see stuff. Because I don't trust God to answer my prayers. And there you're focused kind of on what you don't have. That's why i got to ask God for help. I don't have this. Oh, if I only had the gift of tongues. Oh, if I only could speak like that guy. Or oh, I could only be like them. You know, I don't have. God help. God, God, me, me. And it's not that. It's I don't trust him. God, I don't have enough. I'm not equipped, not worthy, not good enough. And that's not true. That's not true at all. And let me share a read with you here as we go through this. And I have some great stuff for you. And I want to show you Jesus Christ, God, is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So let's go to the Old Testament in King, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 6. And we're talking about Elijah and the widow. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he would drink from the brook. You know, there's uh, Elijah, he don't care. He, he prays that no rain, no more rain will fall on the earth unless he says so. And so no more rain came. And even it made him suffer. He, the creek runs dry. And, and you know, the ravens are bringing him food. God, I trust God so much. I love God so much. It doesn't matter. You know, well, anything. Not food, clothing, homes. You know, all life devoted to God. Everything's devoted to God. And even if that's means pain and suffering to him. He's devoted to God. So God wants to send him back down to town. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and stay there. And he says, Look, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. <laughs> so God already's got something in the works. Remember God's spirit. He's the God of, of hearts and minds. And he lives inside of us. He's already got a, a, a poor woman in the works. He's working on her. He's there working on her. All I need, Elijah, is you to go and, and you know, She's going to provide for you. I ask her to provide for you, and she will. I got this poor soul down in, in town there, and, and we got we to gotta go work on her. Here, here, the whole town, everything in the country is going terrible, but, but God has a poor soul. A single poor woman, a poor widow, who, who, who's cried out to him. And God's working. He's in our heart already. God knows your heart and your mind. Sometimes we think we, we, we've done such bad stuff, God would never forgive us. And God hates us. That's not true. God's working you. He's molding you. He's shaping you. You know, the very fact you, you've got the strength to watch through these videos, seeking Him out, proves He loves you beyond measure. Your name is already in heaven. And he says, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he rose and went to 
Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering steps. And she called to, and he called to her and said, Please give me a little water in a jar that I may drink. So she's picking up sticks, right? And, and, and going to make a little fire. Oh, she's got some little biscuit. Matter of faith, a matter of hope, matter of everything. But where God, our Father, knows your heart knows your mind because he's there in it and he's been working on you. God is sovereign and he's all places everywhere. And he takes care of his children. Right? And so there she's focused on, on, on I'm going to make my little fire and we're going to make our one biscuit. We're going to eat our biscuit and die. You know, as sure as your God, the Lord lives. We're going to make this boss, this biscuit and eat it and die. You know, it's not my God, your God. Sure as your God lives. You know, I, I'm out of hope. I, I'm out of faith. I don't have no faith. I don't have no love. I don't have no nothing. But God loved her. She cried out. God loved her. And, and Elijah goes. Give me a drink. Take your eyes off, off what you don't have. Focus your eyes on, on our Lord, on the servant of God. Give me a drink of water and make me a little biscuit. What are you talking about? All I got is this little biscuit for me and my son. Surely I don't have enough for you. We're starving. We're going to eat this and die. No, no. Just a bite. See, you see, a rich man, he would get to the point of, of that and he probably wouldn't give you nothing. But here's a poor widow with nothing to offer. I ain't got nothing to give. I have no gifts. I don't have nothing. Why would God love me? What's going on? I'm not like those people. I don't have those gifts. God wants to use me. Ah, but if you got all that faith, because she saw the faith of, of Elijah. She saw the faith of, of a godly man. I don't know, something different. I'll trust you. I'll trust you. I'll trust the messenger of God. I'll trust the Lord, our God, in his word. And so she gives him some of the best. And sure as Elijah says to her, you know, if you, if you feed me, you take care of me first. You get your eyes off what you don't have. And share your gift that God gave you. What did he give her? Love. It's, it's, I have nothing. Because I love. I'll share some of my food with you. Because I know what it's like to have nothing. I'll share with you. As little as it is. God, Elijah says, if you share, get your eyes off of what you don't got. Put it on God. Share. Put your eyes on the little gift that you do have. Your, your oil will never run out. Your flour will never run out. Not until it rains. Right? She trusted him. She put faith in that thing. She heard, I heard a word, I heard some hope. And I put some faith in that. And God rewarded her. Gave her the water, the oil and the flour. And then later, God rewards you a hundredfold. I got my eyes off of what I don't have. I, I put my, my focus on the little tiny gift that I did have. And I put in my trust in the word of God. And there my son, sick, dies. Now, I, I got trust. I got faith. Oh, Elijah, what happened to my son? You know, you couldn't you come here to curse my kid. What's going on? He's dead. 
And Elijah, with his great love and great passion, oh Lord, what did you bring me here to bring a curse on this woman? And there restores her, her son's life. God brought life back to that kid. You know, sometimes we don't realize that the, the littlest stuff is greatness to God. Sometimes we don't realize as we're there, God has put us in a spot, a purpose. We have a purpose in life, each one of us, and nobody can fulfill your purpose. Sometimes we're waiting for someone to do it and take care of our purpose. Oh, you do it for me. No, that's Jesus. No, as he says, come, follow me. He didn't say, hey, this is what you need to do. Listen to me. That, did he say, listen to me? No, come, follow me. Let me show you. Let me show you how to do it. Let me show you how to live. Let me show you how to love. Let me show you how, how to do this stuff. Let me show you how to be a dad. Let me show you how to be there in the midst of someone unexpectedly waiting. And that person's there. God has them waiting for you. Not anybody on earth but you. To answer their prayer. So they may have the greatest miracle of all. The knowledge that our names are written in heaven. Dad cares. He loves us. Even when we have no hope. Even when our faith is gone. Even when we're out of everything. We're out of oil. I only got a drop of oil left. It's enough. It's like the ten versions, you know. Oh, well, I don't know if I have enough oil. Well, go get some. You have enough. That's enough. Little bit. And that's the thing. Answering people's prayers. Sometimes they're broken. Sometimes we can get lost in the world and people are beating us down, telling us how unworthy we are. And how far gone we are. But God does never see that there's no hope. God never sees no faith. I have faith. He has faith. He's faith. To never leave you behind. <laughs> That's why you're here. Never leave you behind even in life. Could be in the gutter and God will deliver you. And it's when we get to focus off of what we don't have. And we put our focus on God. See, that's the thing was if you're working there and you lost your focus, and I don't have no gifts, I don't have nothing worthy for this world, I can't do anything. If you get around people that are even brokers than you, broke down at like food banks and stuff, and start beginning to help them and understand, hey, I got all kinds of stuff. I got this, I could take some clothes down there. I don't have much, but I got some clothes. Let's take some clothes. Let's, hey, I got some stuff. I got, hey, I got me. I got me. I can take me down there. Oh, I'll go down there and I will help them. I'm not no longer looking at what I don't have, but what I do have. This is what I got. What do you got? A little tiny biscuit, it's only a nibble. It's good. Because the power of God could take even the smallest things and make it great. Make it greatness. Because that's God. He wants to use the little to shame those great giants out in the world. To show them how, how, how powerful he can be to such a little tiny you. Whoever you may be. Never think you're too small. Never think that you're too far from God. He's always working and using us. You know, there, there's a reason he, he uses each and every person. You know, only you have your friends. I don't have your friends. And God didn't place me in a place to, to, to communicate to your friends. But, but, but you could. God put you in a place. 
you know, and that's the thing. We won't. We got to understand that we take what all the information, all we've learned at the church, out into the world and apply it and use it in our lives. That's why Jesus says, "Follow me. Don't just listen to my words. Let's put it to to work." You know, and all that comes through our relationship with God. And let me go to a read here at uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 23, as he's describing to the people, you know, about what went wrong. And he's talking to all the religious people, the holiest people on earth. So the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do. For they preach, but do not practice. And that's the thing. He wasn't telling them to throw away all these things that, you know, the feast days and all that stuff, or prayer shawls. He's not saying throw that stuff away. He in fact says, listen to them. Just don't do what they do. Don't worship the stuff. And that's the thing, they're worshiping the stuff, the gifts. But, but not God who gave the gifts. Then they lost the connection with God. He says, they tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to move them with a finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fingers long and their fringes, you know, these things. They were really long. They were walking around using these like all oh, their daily life, you know, and no more became a personal relationship, a personal connection between you and God, you know, is use that to separate yourself from the world and just kind of get you in a spot where it's just you and God and nobody else, you know, and you don't really need a prayer shawl or something, get a blanket, whatever, get whatever you need for God, for you, you know, and these things don't create that relationship. God's already got the relationship there waiting for you. You know, you just got to take the time to separate yourself from the world to, to be with them. You know, like those black trees, that's those big square things. And they would put, you know, scriptures and stuff in there and fold them up and carry their favorite scripture around right there on their foreheads. That's what those things are. And, and they loved the place of honor at the feast and, and the best seats in the synagogue and greetings in the marketplace and, and being called rabbi by others. And you see that, you know, you go to church and you have the greeters, you know, and some people, oh, I love to be the greeter and I love to brag about how I have no tongues and, oh, I, I got the best prayers or or, or look at me, you know, kind of look at me. Some of them will dress in the finest of clothes for Sunday. They could have suits and ties, but perfect on Sunday. Again, look at me. Look how religious I am. Look how, how, how good I am. But, but inside, never been to a food bank, ever. Ne never took the time to, to meet my my people at church. I don't. I don't even. I'm Twenty years. I don't know that guy's name. I don't even know who they are. Never have lunch with them. Never called them on the phone. See that that those are the things that make disconnection. You know, Jesus says well, you'll be known by the way you love. We're all religious. We're all about going to church. We're all about no sin. Stop smoking. But. Love for one another? Nah. You know. I'm forgiven. <laughs> and that's where we get lost. It is love. And without God being first and foremost in our lives as being in the presence of God, being in the present moment, you know, we can really get lost from God. 
and things get tough. You know, it's kind of like church when you go to, you know, have you ever heard your preachers pray through the Lord's Prayer? I mean, it's not just, a, it's a key. It's not just saying those words as a, like a chant. Oh, just say these words. It's just words. And it's not that it's words, it's a key. It's a way to pray. But but who, you go to church and they have the prayer, all right, well, today we're going to pray for whatever. They don't even pray like that. And then, and then the church kind of breaks down. And there, you know, we lose relationships and churches fail. And it's because, not, not for any other reason, that then love has been lost. Love for God, love for His Word. I don't trust you. I don't believe that's the only way to pray. I'll pray my way. Go ahead. See how that works for you. There you are in the gutter. There you lost your church. There you lost all this stuff. Why? You didn't trust God. He said, pray like this. Why? Well, because He loves you. And if you trust Him, if you trust His Word, Jesus Christ is the Word in the flesh. If you trust His Word, then you do what He says. Right? Believe God with all your heart, mind, and soul? Do you believe that? Do you do that? Yeah, I pray to Him. Okay, pray like this. No, I don't want to. I want to pray my way. Well, go ahead. See where that gets you. <laughs> And many people don't see prayers. They don't see things happen. You got to pray with your heart. God wants your heart. You know, and your faith, your trust. Pray like this. Okay. Great. Now you trust me. Now you trust my words. And because you trust me, because you trust my words, I'm going to answer your prayer. You know? Some of us, ah, oh, we didn't pray that way. You know, I was lost in the car, I was homeless, praying out, crying out for food, and, and, and I wasn't following that thing. Yeah, but you cried out with all your heart. With all your heart. And, and, and that's the thing. It's recognizing God, I need God with all my heart. And God, that's what He wants, all your heart. And that's what some of this stuff is there. It's not about any other thing that then getting you to soften that heart. A human heart is very cold. And it needs, you know, help. That's what Jesus came for. Help! You need help. I know you need help. You all went your own way and you turned evil. That's what you do. But the love of God is, I'm going to come and help you. Yeah, you were there out in the street and you lost him. But here you are today. Why? Because God called you home, and God's calling you in. He's saying, son, I, I, child, I love you. And I don't want you down there hurt anymore. I don't want you to feel that anymore. You know, I care. God cares. Sometimes we're waiting for other people to, to, to give us that care and that love. And, and it would be wonderful if they did, because that's God. But, but it all starts with God and loving Him and loving ourselves. So we've got to love ourselves so we can love them just as we love ourselves. You know, it, it's all relative. And He says, He says, And be called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi. For you have one teacher. And you are to be, you are all brothers. And no man, and call no man your father on earth. For you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructions, instructors, for you have one instructor. The Christ. So, Jesus, you know, promises the Holy Spirit. And it's the Christ, the Christ of God, the, the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus was the Christ. He, he was the Holy Spirit all in flesh, one spot. And he goes back to heaven, cracks open that alabaster box, the Holy Spirit, and gives us the gift to all, all people. And 
that's gifts are gifts of love, gifts of the Spirit are love, you know, and, and all those things. And each of us have them, we just don't know. And that thing sometimes was, you know, don't let another person tell you how much God loves you or doesn't love you. Don't make another person's relationship with God your relationship with God. Your relationship with God is your relationship. And God can only be found in the Bible. So, oh yeah, we go to church and we listen and we hear testimony and this and that from each and every person. And we use that to help us, to guide us. But always, we, we got to go back to the Word. It all comes from the Word. It comes from God. Love, it comes from, from His Word. And from loving Him. Loving His Word. Right? So, the greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Have you ever thought of, you know, church people, pastors, teachers, maybe you're one of them? You know, hey, my pay is going to be whatever the least of our congregation is. I don't need to be the highest paid guy. I'm going to take the pay of whoever's the least in our congregation. You know. And then all of a sudden and you're like, hey man, you, you need a better job? <laughs> now you don't want to help the, the, the poor guy out in the congregation. Hey, let's get this guy a raise, you know. Now I need some more money. <laughs> and there you got care for him. Now he's worth something. You know, you want to be great to God. You need to be like Jesus and be involved in that's what he's saying with follow me. Come out here into the world, into the broken, into the hopeless. Let's shine a light from the, for them. Yeah, everybody in church, yeah, we all believe in God. But, but what about out there? And when we're out there, shouldn't we have brothers and sisters and friends and church people that, hey, I can fall back on, I can get some wisdom, I, I can have a friend, Somebody I can call that I can trust when, when, when something's wrong here. You know, that's the thing with God and Jesus. And what's gone wrong today is we lost love and sight of love. Everything comes from our worth, from, from the things of this world. And God warned us so many times not to find your worth from, from the stuff. Because this stuff is so temporary. You can take it right away. Anything. Your job, your money, your health. Your homes. But you can't take your faith. can't take God. can't take your relationship. And if we see our other brothers and sisters in pain or hurting, man, how compassionate was God on you when he drug you out of the gutter? You know, he wasn't looking at your sins when, when you cried out. He wasn't there to, to, to see how horrible you were. No, he was there to say, let me save you, let me pull you out, let me help you. And if he did that for you, shouldn't we see that, hey man, they have that same need. Did they need help? They need pulled up. Wow, could God really use me? To do a miracle in their life? What kind of miracle? Do I need to heal a broken leg? No. How about a broken heart? Hey, can I be your friend today? I'd like to know your number. I'd like to have your phone number. Give me your name so we can call. Would you like to talk to me about your problems? I will listen. I ain't going to give you an answer, but boy, you just dump it on me and I will listen. Just as, as we dumped it all on Jesus Christ, as he took our sins away. Can, can't we be willing to, to kind of be there for, for other people? You know, that's the thing with we'll getting your pencils out and, and stuff and writing. You know, you find a PowerPoint and I'm going to mark that down and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get involved. And that's God even 
you know, baby steps. It's little. It's hard. For some of us, it's easy. For some, it's hard. Baby steps. Get your pencil out. Let me show you how to get involved. Get your pencil out. I'm going to get involved. It's little. It don't seem like much. But, boy, I got something there that, that, that you know, that I could maybe use that in my life. And so I'm going to get involved. I'm going to get my pencil out, get involved, and, and it'll grow. Now, now, I don't need that right there. It's in my heart. I memorized it. Now I'm out there kind of not just talking about it, but I'm living it. I'm doing it. I, I, I asked that grouchy, nasty person how their day was. And boy, I found out that their husband's beating them down. I found out that their husband's an alcoholic. I found out they're kind of having a real hard time. And by talking, by letting it go, she, they were able to go home and not and lay it on, on their husband or their wives. Because they released it. They were able to let it go. And there you were, gave them an opportunity to let it go. And you'd say, oh, how is that a miracle? Hey, man, they didn't go beat their wife that night. What a miracle is that? I mean, it, it's, it has a trickle effect. It, it truly does. The only way to conquer evil, the only way to conquer all, all the stuff in this world is through love. And God, Jesus, has proved it over and over and over throughout history of any tyrant on, on earth. And even now, <laughs> even now, you do it now, with you, with us. Healing comes from hugging. Healing comes from laying hands on people. You know, you gotta care for someone to give them a hug. You gotta care for somebody to touch them. You know, we gotta be there and, and, and willing to, to provide that care. Those are the greatest miracles of all. Greatest miracle of all is the day you know why you're born. Because God made you, that's why. You're going to heaven. He wanted to know you to know him. That's why you're born. So, you got to humble yourself. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. For you shut the kingdom of heaven in the face of people's faces. For you neither enter yourselves nor allow those who would enter to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. For you travel across sea and land to make a single convert. And when he becomes one, you make him twice as much of a child as hell as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guys. You say, if anyone swears by the temple, it is nothing. But if anyone swears by the gold of the temple, he is bound by his oath. You, bind, you blind fools, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that made the gold sacred? And that's the thing today, you know, where temple is gone. Jesus eliminated all the temple worship. You know, he, he totally destroyed Jerusalem and all the temple worship. And here today, the, the devil wants to rebuild the temple worship, reestablish this temple-style worship. And you're the temple, you know. And what's more sacred than you? The, the temple God made. You know, and we are to be holy. The holy temple of God. And, and it's a process, and, and we're holy. We're holy the day we're born. We're born blind. And we must be born blind. We have to be. And even if we're children, we're born into church, and, and we think we believe, and we do, you're still going to go into the wilderness. You're still going to go into blindness. Because nobody's righteous. You know, we're all saved by grace and we all are sinners. We hate it. It makes me sick to sin. But this is my hope. This is my prayer. This is my peace. One day, God's going to put an end 
to this life. I'm going to start a new life. And I'll never sin then. I'll have a new body. And it'll never break down. and never get sick. Because I put my trust in God. I put my trust and my faith in His Word. I didn't put my trust and the faith in the stuff. But put the Word that said, I love you. And I ain't leaving you behind. Never leave you behind. And even if we get darkness and, the, and blinded, we wouldn't know the, the true grace of God. We wouldn't know how much God loved us. Unless we were out there. You know, you wouldn't never know what it felt like to stick your finger in that light socket unless you did it. <laughs> and once you did it, you know, only the wise children turn to God and be like, Hey, I ain't going through that experience again. And I'm going to listen to Dad. But I'm going to be very wary of the power Dad's got when we get disobedient. And it's not that you're going to hell. No. You're down there in the down and outs because God doesn't want to allow you to go to hell. He ain't going to let you. You know, he has a special place in his heart. So there you're broke down, and there is there to answer. He's there to, to, to do something great in your life. And it's through seeing that, that the, the greatness of him, once we come out of that darkness, he gives us the, the motive and, and the love. And that's the thing, you know, of our desires. Some people say, ah, oh, don't be out there working. Don't make this works. And it's not works. It's works to, to a prostitute. It's works to somebody who doesn't love it, doesn't love God. But to people who love it, it's not work at all. It's, I don't, how can I, what's work about giving a person a hug? How's that work? How does it work to say, I care about you? What is so work about that? What's so hard about that? And when we can't do those things, it's because we're, we're, we're so rejected inside that, that, that we can't connect with God. And that's the thing that I want everybody to understand and know. People get rejected inside because we as men and women might be the ones rejecting them. And God says, if you reject them, you reject Him. Because he is father of all people. Or all brothers and sisters. You know, and you don't worship your pastors or your teachers. Or make them give you a connection to God. Hey pastor, pray for me. And yeah, we pray together and we do those things. But your connection to God is God wants to answer your prayers. Yours. Pray like this. And he shows you how to pray. And he explains it. You know, and that's the thing. As you go through there, he's explaining how, you know, it's not outside. It's inside. Right? It's not to be seen. I don't go to church so everybody knows I'm religious. But I go to church so I can learn how to be a better person. So when I'm out there in the world, I can let my light shine. I can walk it with integrity and character, and I can have the ability to, to, to see the, the brokenness of the world. I'm not looking at what I don't have. I'm not looking at gifts. I'm not looking at any of these things. I'm looking at, wow, you really need some help. And boy, I can't stand to see you suffer. Let me help you. Let me work with that. You know, and, and it also, you could see it in, in jobs. Maybe, maybe you own a business. But I only want to pick and choose, you know, the best of the best. And boy, that lady, you know, she's just overweight. And ah, oh, we don't want her, you know. And, and picking and choosing. And there you are, rejecting God. Now, now you don't know the effects that has on people. Breaking them down. 
Never give them a chance. Most people don't have work because they're 50 years old. I have gray hair. And she, nope, none for you. You have missing teeth. Too heavy. Ah, that guy smokes. You know, and there were, you know, as Christians, we don't want to be like that. We want to restore people. We don't want God places you in a position to help. Could be as an employer. To, to help bring people, you know, food and take care of them so, so that they may be a blessing. God blessed you with the business, the mind, and the know-how to run a business. To, to use that to, to bring hope into lives of people who may not have that. Maybe they've been out and they couldn't get a job for months and rejection and rejection and rejection and there you are to answer a prayer of a rejected person. You know, it's when these words are, aren't no more words. It's, it's life. It's life. It ain't church. It ain't religion. It's life. This is my life. I gave my life to God. And that's for everyone. And you know, it's not, you don't have to quit all your work, but everything I do is God's first. God is focused in the presence of life. Work, home, school, wherever. He's always present in our lives. And let me share a little read here too with you. As John chapter 13, verse 31. And Jesus says, No, is the Son of Man, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified, is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him at once. Little children, ye let yet a little while I Little while, while I am with you, you will seek me. And just as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all the people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And so, love is a big deal to God. Jesus Christ came to show us love and to show us that, that each one of us, how much we are loved by God. You know, and we're never too hopeless, we're never too lost, we've never sinned too much. It is God who has been molding and shaping us. And when we come to understand how much God loves us, we are to love each other. Because we are brothers and we're sisters. You know, we're not church members. We're not neighbors. We're, we're, we're family. We're family. And we need to treat each other as though we we're family members. You know, so, so let me leave you with one more last read, and, we'll, and then we'll finish up. So go to uh, Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for, your court, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar. O oh Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on your pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a places of springs. The autumn rains also covers it with pools. 
And that's the thing. You know, don't think that, that because you have nothing, because I've been so focused on what I don't have, that, that God hasn't been there blessing you all the while. You know, that, that's when you, you, you know, fasting. <laughs> fasting from your sins. Our sins is we don't believe in God. We don't trust God. That's the only sin there is. Blaspheming the Holy Spirit, saying God can't be trusted. God can't be believed on. I can't put my faith in God. Can't see Him, feel Him, or touch Him. But when we get our focus off of what we don't have, See, that's sometimes why we don't pay tithes. I don't have enough. I can't pay it. I don't trust you. I don't have. I don't know. Or maybe a little bit. But, but God says, trust me. Don't think you don't have enough. There's a woman. She gave one penny. Jesus said, hey, that penny means more to me than, than all the rest. Because she trusted me. You gave because you had to. You're supposed to. She gave because she trusted me. She loved me. She gave it all. Had no worth to her. None. Ah, she only had one penny. But it was all she had. It was all she had. You know? You give from, from her wealth. What good is that? But when it's all you got pretty big to God. I take that little penny and I'll make you great, Miss Woman. They'll talk about you for the next 2,000 years. That's how much importance that penny had to me. You know, the, the, the rain is there. The pools are there. Sometimes we're so down and out. Devil listening to that devil. How worthless we are. If we could go and see at the food banks, do what he said. Hey, go and live in love. Obey my commandments. Obey my words. Love each other. Start it out. Kind of see, hey, the pain, the suffering. I ain't got it so bad. Now I'm at home. Thank God in heaven. I got a home. I got food. I got the stuff. I mean, I got so much stuff. I... Let me help you. Let me give it away. Let me help you. Man, I, I thought I had nothing, but boy, I, I'm blessed. Let me help those who, who are less fortunate. They go from strength to strength. Not my strength, but your strength. Not my will, but your will. That's the thing. Gotta, gotta lay down our strength. We're, we're, we have no strength. We're weak. Everything for us, impossible. For God, all things are, are possible. Let, let's trade the impossible for the possible. What I don't have to what I got. I got the power of God. What more do I need? He made stars and moons. And he made you. Hear my prayer, O Lord, God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Right? Better one day in the court of God than a thousand days stuck in the mud. You know, you can have a thousand days, no God, and I'm the richest man on earth, but, but you have nothing without God. Hey, I, I got the biggest church in town, but you got nothing without God. And what? I pray to God every day. Yeah, yeah. But where's the love? God is love. No love, no God. You know, if you're proud to be the highest paid person of your church? Maybe, maybe no God. Because you would surely think and wonder. Maybe, maybe the lowest guy at the church. 
has greater value to God that then the church sees. We as men and women. Maybe that guy on the corner that you pass by every day never to give a chance to say even good morning. Maybe that's the God. That's the one. If you save just that one, that guy's like lost, man. He's the last one. And all this would be done. All this would be over. But nobody on earth will talk to that guy. And that's the one God wants the most. But we as men, nah, no value. <laughs> we need to be careful. Everybody has value to God. Jesus came to die for everyone. You reject them? You do reject them. You do. You want to get your prayers answered? <laughs> Put them first. <laughs> Put them first and you'll see. God's been taking care of you all along. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is the sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withheld from those who walk in blameless. Right? Those whose walk is blameless. To those who listen, don't know those who walk. Hey, come, follow me. In walking in town. Those who walk. It's when the word comes flesh. I know Jesus is the flesh of God. Yeah, but the Christ, the Holy Spirit. When that Holy Spirit has a resting spot, you know, and it's little, it starts out little. God's there in the beginning. But, but the greater our love is, the greater God is. Greater God is, the greater our, our love is. You know, even God tells Job, Job, those guys blaspheme me. Man, those guys talk to everything bad. Job, pray for them. Pray for them. And I will forgive them. They screwed it up. Job, you. Hey, hey, you, you're so focused on your stores and your nasties. Hey, Job, Job, pray for them. Those guys, they're, they're, they're totally out. You were right. You were so right. I mean, I love you, Job, with all my heart. And those guys were wrong. Job, pray for them. And I will restore you. Job prays for them. Them, those people. Make an altar and a sacrifice for Job. And God restored him. Because Job listened. God says, love each other. Job, pray for them. Job, Job, pray for yourself? No, 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 not yourself. Job, pray for them. Those guys that are wrong. So they too may be children of God. And if you pray for them, so they too may be children of God, I will restore you. I will restore everything you got, everything you need. Because you loved me. And you weren't wrong. You were never wrong. You were never outside my will. And because I love you. Pray for them, so they too may be a part of the kingdom. You understand? We, 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 we got to get our eyes off of what we don't have. Because when we don't have, we don't have hope. And when we don't have, we don't have faith. And if we don't have faith and we don't have hope, we don't have God. And when we don't have God, 
we fail. And those who, who hate God love death, love failure. The, the Word of God, Jesus didn't come to erase the Word of God. He came to show the world that this Word is good. Every bit of it is good. And every bit of it has been made, written, and produced for you for one reason. So you know how much God loves you. That this isn't laws and rules. This is how much God loves you. Right? We, we carry the, this blue thing around to remind us. God called us. God chose us. He, he called us. And all we did was respond. That's what we did. Dad called. And we responded. How did Dad call? What's the voice of God sound like? Boy, it, sometimes it can come down like thunder and wrath. Fire! And there, wisdom. <laughs> Ooh, I need help. In the midst of the fire, in the midst of, uh, of the problems, I, I see a light. Something. What is it? It's the voice of God. It's called hope. It's called faith. In the same way, if each and every one of us would come to understand by bringing the body of Christ together, we can conquer all things. We can be a part of the greatest thing on earth, the coming of God that's going to come save this dead world from going to hell. Because we said we love God and it's worth Saving, he said, pray for them. Job, pray for them. They're worth it. God said they're worth it. You are worth it. Right? Yes. He chose you. That's why we're here. He chose you. Because he loves you. Let's stand up and trust the word of God and go out and save this dead world by loving each other and trusting the power of God is in us right here. And he'll never leave us. Never. See you next time.